Hi, I'm just going to be showing you how you can do a, a commentary, a spoken commentary on this well-known novel, The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. This uh, version, which I'm basing the commentary on today, is uh, published by Back Bay Books, 1951, and I'm going to be doing a commentary based on page one and two in that, that book. When you're doing a commentary like this in class, what you're looking to do is to have an argument that you develop about the meaning in the text. That might be the meaning uh, of how the character is developed and shown, or it might be a meaning about the message, the theme of the text. Um, might be about how representation works. What do different things uh, represent through metonymy or symbolism? Today, I'm going to be basing my commentary on uh, how the first pages of this book uh, construct meaning about the main character, the narrator Holden Caulfield. And I'm going to develop my argument along the lines that the, these first two pages, or the first main paragraph on the on the first two pages, um, creates some aspects of the character of Holden Caulfield. Uh, my argument is going to be, uh, having looked at this yesterday in class somewhat, and today, is going to be is focusing on two things about the way Holden's character is shown here: uh, that he is defensive. He is trying to defend um, himself from what we might think about him and how we might judge him. He wants to hold back perhaps some information um, that might put him in a bad light. That's the first main point I'm going to be making in my s commentary, which, by the way, hasn't started just yet. I'm just giving you some background. The second thing I will be suggesting is going to be that he is judgmental. And this is a, a famous attribute of this character. He's a very judgmental character. And I'm going to be arguing that um, his judge, judgmental sort of temperament comes out in, in this first paragraph. Um, so that's how I'm going to structure my whole commentary. That Hol Holden is represented as being defensive and he is represented as being judgmental. And I'm going to look at some of the stylistic features that support that um, my argument, I believe. Um, I'm going to be talking about how the language creates that meaning. The language creates the sense that uh, for us, the readers, that Holden is de defensive and judgmental. I hasten to add that these are not the only attributes of Holden we can see here. Yesterday, in class, my focus was more on how childish Holden seems to be in this extract. But on reflection, I'm going to go for uh, developing the idea of his uh, judgmental uh, temperament uh, today, his judgmental attitude. Uh, of course, Holden is still childish, and he's naive, and he's all these other things that you could easily base a commentary around here. But those are the two I'm going for. To prepare, I've made some notes. Um, I've uh, broken the extract up somewhat. I I'm basically I'm I'm trying not to just go through the extract from start to beginning, as it happens, somewhat that's going to happen today. I think in my commentary, but a commentary does not have to do that. You don't have to start at the the beginning and go sentence by sentence, talking about all the language all the way through from the top of the extract to the bottom of the extract. That could be done if you handle it carefully. I'm going to focus more on trying to look at, for the first part of my commentary, on his defensive um, qualities, or negative characteristics that are, that are defensive, and then move on to um, his is judging other other characters and judging the world. As it happens, 
the first part about him being defensive does seem to mostly be from the first part of the extract and um, the side where he's harshly judging, unrealistically um, holding other characters to, to ridiculous standards is happens to be in the second part. But don't feel like you always have to go all the way through. Uh, this has just happened to somewhat mirror that. Um, I could well have discovered some aspects in here about how judgmental he is and some aspects in here about how defensive he is. But it's a good idea to try at least at some stage breaking your commentaries up into um, into maybe themes or aspects of character rather than just practicing going from A to Z as it were through through the extract. Although as I say with caution and keeping a focus on uh, how language constructs meaning. You, you can possibly do that. I've only just labelled the language features that are going to support my um, overall argument here. For example, I've got direct address. It's going to be the first thing I talk about. I've just got the word there, direct address. I'm confident as an English teacher that I can probably know what I mean by that as I'm doing my commentary. We'll see. Um, but you might and your preparations want to make more notes down the side. So not just label the language feature, but in your own notes, briefly annotate what effects these language features have in relation to your overall theme. Uh, I didn't quite have the time or the space on my page to do that, and I feel that I, I, can, do, I can develop and convincingly explain how these language features uh, quoted here will support my thesis statement. But you might want to have a few more notes down the side of your page. Okay, I'm now going to begin. <clears throat> so here's where the the commentary part starts. And I'm sure I'm not going to do it perfectly, but just to give you an idea of the overall uh, approach you can take in your commentary on an extract from this novel. Today I will be uh, talking about uh, the, the first paragraph from chapter one of The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. And I will be arguing <coughs> excuse me, that this extract shows two main aspects of uh, Holden's character. That is, Holden is very defensive. He is unsure and he's holding back. He's not confident and he's being very cautious and guarded about... Um, the story he is presenting to his audience, which is we, which is we, which is us, the readers. Um, Holden is also extremely judgmental. He holds other characters to high standards and perhaps unrealistic standards in a very judgmental and, and strict way. Um, this extract... Um, begins with direct address. Holden says, if you really want to hear about it, the first thing you'll probably want to know is where I was born, and so on. Um, later on he says, but I don't feel like going into it if you want to know the truth. Through direct address, talking to the audiences being you, um, Holden is creating a sense of distance, perhaps, uh, between himself and the audience. He is definitely not seeing uh, the audience as necessarily being on his side. By repeating you and I, that almost creates a sense of antithesis that, that Holden is very aware that there is this relationship where information is going to pass along. But you can tell that there, there are two different um, places um, where the story originates from him and where the story will be received. You, the audience. And in this way, uh, it highlights Holden as somewhat defensive by repeating you. If you want to know this, um, if you want to know the truth, if you really want to hear about it, you'll probably want to know. By repeating these ideas and using direct address, uh, the reader feels that Holden might be uh, feeling somewhat under attack or that he is being interrogated or that he is being expected to give information that we, the readers, will want to know. And uh, this is one way Holden's 
uh, defensive uh, characteristics are revealed in this uh, opening extract. He <coughs> derisively speaks of David Copperfield kind of crap. Can I say that on the internet? I'm not sure. David Copperfield kind of crap. Uh, this is an allusion to the novel by Charles Dickens, which details the whole life of a character. And Holden is saying he is not going to tell that kind of story where a whole story, a whole life story is revealed. He is saying, I will be holding some things back. By definition, if he is not going to do the whole David Copperfield story, um, it, it's suggesting that information will be withheld through necessity. And the colloquial language of uh, calling it kind of crap shows that Holden is dismissive and maybe defensive. He, David Copperfield is a novel that tells the whole story of someone's life. Holden is saying at the very outset of the novel, I am not going to tell the whole story of my life. Um, he uses colloquial language again um, in a defensive way when he says, that kind of stuff bores me. Stuff is a colloquial term, and by using a colloquial, dismissive, derogatory term, uh, casually rejecting that kind of stuff, he is again um, positioning himself in a way that he wants to um, let us know right from the outset that he will hold back. Um, he uses hyperbole. He says, my mom and dad, my parents would have about two hemorrhages apiece. This is hyperbole. He is speaking hyperbolically to say that it's just impossible for him to tell us the whole story because uh, Holden, uh, Holden's parents would um, would suffer um, fatal hemorrhage. Uh, of course, this would not happen. Holden is using hyperbole to present his excuses why he will not tell us um, anything personal, in particular about them. So he is cutting out a whole part of his life story, the story of his parents, and the hyperbole emphasizes this. He says, I'll just tell you um, about this madman stuff that happened to me around last Christmas. Uh, the colloquial expression, madman stuff, is somewhat casual and dismissive about perhaps Holden suffering from some kind of mental illness. But the way he phrases it, madman stuff, um, shows his defensiveness that he is um, not presenting this kind of uh, mental and psychological torment as being anything serious. It's just madman stuff. So in these ways, you know, through the use of um, stylistic devices such as direct address and illusion, um, hyperbole and colloquial language, Holden is clearly um, being adamant and clear to us that he is going to hold, his intention is to hold parts of his story back. He is defensive. He might feel that um, he is not going to appear um, very favorably in his story. So he is putting barriers perhaps between us and himself early on, or so he intends um, as evidenced in this opening extract. As well as being defensive, Holden is judgmental. Um, in particular, he, is, uh, he uses his brother, D.B., as an example of the kind of person he doesn't approve of or want to be, at least not the way D.B. is now. Um, we could say that through synecdoche, through synecdoche, D.B. represents all the phony and fake people that Holden wants to judge and, and distance himself from. He says, um, <coughs> he says, he just got a Jaguar. And I've put down that this is a simple sentence. A ja he, he just got a Jaguar. The Jaguar is a car. And it's a simple sentence. It stands out. Um, and, of course, a Jaguar, uh, through uh, synecdoche or metonymy, represents wealth. So Holden is setting it up that he uh, rejects this idea of, you know, a showy, uh, phony, fake displays of wealth as being um, something that's undesirable. It cost him damn near 4000 bucks. 
colloquial language used again um, here to show that Holden believes this, this sort of phony, fake display of, of wealth as, as being something that is to be looked down upon and judged. Uh, Holden also says about DB that a DB is now out in Hollywood being a prostitute. This is a metaphor. Uh, DB is a um, DB is a scriptwriter for the movies. So um, labeling him a, a prostitute is a, um, a metaphor that again shows Holden being incredibly judgmental, ironically of his own brother, who clearly cares about him. Ho uh, DB has been visiting Holden and looking after him, yet. Holden is judging him. It seems most unfair. To us as readers, we, um, we are ironically going to judge Holden right from the first page. We're going to judge him because he is being unfairly judgmental. Now this is ironic because remember early on I suggested that Holden was defensive. He didn't, he wants to hold back his story for various reasons. One of which could be that he doesn't want to be judged. Yet, within the same paragraph, he is telling us things that make him seem unfair and harsh and overly strict. Maybe we sense hypocritical. Um, and therefore, we, we must um, ironically end up passing some sort of judgment on Holden himself as he judges others. This paragraph finishes with the imperative, don't even mention them to me. Um, here again we see a, a fusion of his his being judgmental and defensive. He does what he is talking about there is the movies. Don't even mention them to me. Uh, this is a defensive stance. He's saying, I do not want to you may not tell me about the movies. Um, again, it's a source of form of direct address, isn't it? Um, so he is being defensive at the same time he is being judgmental. So the final point I would like to make is I believe there's a, there's a connection between how defensive Holden is and how judgmental Holden is. And I believe that through the course of the novel from here on, it would be worth studying the connection between Holden's uh, defensive side and his judgment, judgmental nature and how they uh, combine together. So that's a challenge I would like to leave you as you read and study this novel.